Hello, greetings everyone. In this session, we are going to learn about um, building an embedded Linux uh, using the Clang compiler and tools. We've been seeing Clang as a option being developed for uh, as a compiler over the past several years. And uh, this is specifically, I'm going to cover what's going on with respect to Clang in the embedded Linux community in general. And um, there are several talks, um, including myself, uh, who have uh, presented on Clang in various aspects. Um, this will be specifically building a full system and um, trying to use Clang as system compiler. Um, so this is rough. Um, agenda. So first we'll go through um, what Clang-based toolchain looks like, and then uh, we'll cover uh, the kernel status, uh, the kernel compiling status, and um, then we'll uh, go for building a platform. And I'm going to use uh, the Octo project to build the platform. Uh, there are other uh, platform builders out there. I'll briefly mention them. And if you want to use those, uh, you're welcome to try those as well. And then I'll uh, go over um, what are different options that are available for runtimes um, and what options we can choose within the Octo framework and what works, what doesn't yet. And then uh, we'll also go over some of uh, the common errors that um, you could see um, that you need to address for various packages. I'll also cover through um, some of this from Debian's perspective, because I think um, that's one of the largest archives that has been uh, uh, recompiled or an effort is there to recompile that with um, um, Clang as a compiler. So um, building a platform based upon um, Clang, you know, there are three things that you will see in addition to Clang runtime, um, which is basically uh, a compiler runtime similar to libgcc and and um, provides the initial initialization code and uh, it also has some um, um, compiler built-ins that are generally provided as a library but then support for sanitizers and and profiling libc++ is an is an effort for uh, running um, standard C++ runtime. So in, in GNU toolchain speak, you can think it like a lib standard C++ library. And then there's a low level implementation for ABI, which is called libc++ ABI. Um, and then there's an unwinder library as well that is available, which is called uh, the uh, lib unwind. And uh, we'll cover them as well. So if you look at the tools map in general, um, between say a GCC, a compiler tool chain and a clang slash LLVM, then this is roughly how you can map them. Uh, there is a CC++ compiler, and uh, which is basically clang or clang++, and uh, the assembler called CC1S. This is internal assembler, uh, which is used by clang by default. Um, and there are options to not use it, but um, that will be the default if you don't make um, any any specific effort to disable it. Uh, linker, um, there is LLD, which is um, the LLVM linker. Um, it's relatively new. Um, it could be used as an option. However, Clang can work very well with uh, BFD linker or goal linker. Um, there are no issues there. And uh, debugger, there's a LLDB, which is um, uh, your front end for debugging and native debugging. But there is also LLDB server, which is uh, for cross debugging systems. So you could um, install LLDB on the target and then run LLDB on the host, uh, similar to GDB and GDB server setup. Uh, in terms of compiler runtime, uh, the compiler RT project that is uh, providing um, the C runtime, as I was discussing earlier, uh, which is uh, implementing some of the functionality that libgcc provides you. And then Unwinder, 
There's a Lib Unwind, which is um, a separate library, um, implements the unwinding routines that generally you will find in uh, LibGCC uh, as well. In terms of C++ runtime, you got libc++ and libc++ api we talked about that and then it can work with several standard c libraries um glibc muscle um there is also a llvm libc which is a relatively new project um which is also offering as an option currently it is in a nascent state so i'm not going to cover that as much um, um from Linux platform point of view, glibc in Muscle is um, currently more important and more uh, interesting. And then there are also binutils equivalents for archivers and and uh, symbol dumping and 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 um, and other utilities. So you will find a LLVM dash equivalent of all those um, utilities as well. Um, so this is uh, roughly the map that you see here. Uh, and then additionally, when you uh, see uh, to these are like standard tools, but then you can also see that there are additional tools um, that are very useful. And uh, Clang Tidy uh, is a linter tool. Uh, and Clang Doc generates documentation similar to Doxygen. And Clang D is actually a a tool that you can use for adding C, C++ features to editors uh, like VS Code and, and Vim and others. So um, it can offer a, a good uh, editing experience. It exposes all the, uh, all the uh, language uh, features through Clang D. Uh, Scan Build, which we'll cover a little bit in later, uh, is the static analyzer. So it's, it's very handy. You could uh, use it to do some static analysis as well. And all that's all this is uh, bundled with the uh, Clang tool suite. So uh, we'll run through these tools a little bit later. Um, Clang uh, advertises itself as uh, GCC 4.2.1. So it's a very important distinction. So when um, we are compiling software, you will see um, these internal compiler defines being used uh, in several places to find out what features are supported by a given compiler. So there is conditional code that might be checking for um, underscore, underscore, GNU C underscore, underscore, or, you know, the minor version and, um, and then deciding to go one way or another, like, you know, supporting um, C99 inlining or something like that. So um, be aware that if code is doing this, then um, they would be fooled by Clang compiler. While it might have those features, but um, you know your auto detection tools or, or um, other scripts may not be able to detect that. Um, Clang also exposes some of its own internal defines, um, primarily underscore underscore Clang underscore underscore, and uh, that is one. Um, define you could use to uh, make sure that you know you are using a clang compiler or not and then there is also clang major clang minor which um, is similar to GNU C minor and uh, GNU C variables um, uh, to find out which version of clang you're running so um, and similarly i talked about clang assembler which is a uh, internal assembler uh, for example, it's it's limited in several sense and it's different uh, from a, a GNU assembler. Uh, talking of ARM, it only supports unified syntax. So if you have um, you know some uh, inline assembly or um, uh, assembly mixed code, you pass through Clang, it may not uh, accept it. Uh, it is a single pass assembler. Uh, what that means is, you know, if you're doing some symbol calculations based on distance, that is very common in, in assembly files, it may not be able to handle that. And um, uh, so uh, usually what I've seen is when you have files that are written in uh, pure assembly or uh, oriented toward assembly, you might find these kind of incompatibilities. They are addressable but they might show up as errors at the very uh, onset when you're putting 
a software to it. So, um, but the good news is that Clang can uh, work with say GNU Assembler. So you can ask it uh, with disable, uh, disable actually internal assembler with um, half no integrated AS option. Once you pass it on, it will expect you to provide a GNU assembler um, and during the assembly step. And um, if you have built the tool chain correctly, um, it will automatically find it. Um, so now moving on to a little bit on the kernel side. So uh, there was an effort for uh, LLVM Linux that was started a few years ago. And, uh, and then now um, there are several community members who are interested in, in making sure that Linux kernel can compile with Clang. And uh, there is this landing page now uh, called Clang Built Linux. Um, and uh, so what this is, um, it is basically making sure that um, it is uh, running a continuous integration job that is building various configurations of the kernel using Clang compiler and other Clang tools. So there are options that are introduced in kernel to build and just with uh, uh, Clang tools. And uh, it exercises all those uh, uh, options and, and, and reports back on the build status. It uses Travis to do that. Uh, so if you are interested in following what all different combinations it is checking, please go to this link that I provided here. Um, there's the issue, issues tracker uh, that's using GitHub issues. So if you are interested in this effort, um, use it on file issues over there. Uh, if you find any issue in your own bills or whatever. Um, if you are preparing patches to you know, fix some things in Linux kernel with uh, Clang, uh, submit those patches upstream into LKML directly. So um, GitHub issues is to track those, you know, what, what all issues are pending. Um, but if you have patches, then, you know, it's a, um, it's a fork of uh, Linux's tree, but uh, it doesn't, uh, I mean, they may accept the pull request as a, you know, um, placeholder for a patch, but uh, if you want it to be included upstream, then uh, directly go to LKML and submit those patches over there. You could take the help from the community uh, if you want to make sure that your patch is in good shape to be submitted upstream. Um, so Clang Build Linux is a uh, snapshot I've given here. Uh, there is a wiki, you know, you can uh, learn about how to compile the kernel. Um, using Clang and uh, what all repos it does. There's a mailing list and there's IRC as well. Um, more importantly, there is actually a bi-weekly um, meeting that is uh, held online. And um, you know a lot of these issues get discussed over there and status gets discussed. So if you are interested to um, become active, you know, you could, you're very welcome to join that. Right now, uh, ARM uh, AR64, and x86, 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 x84. Those are primarily um, tier one targets, I would say, um, that can compile with Clang and uh, they are um, fairly in good shape where you know they can boot and, and all the features are working fine. Um, then uh, th there is a list actually, a big list that you can find there and um, um, you can see that limited test configurations are available for uh, Power PC and MIPS. And RISC-5 is in progress um, and there is a lot of interest in there. And if you have other architectures, you know, that are supported by Clang but, and, and Linux as well, but uh, there doesn't exist a build for those in here um, contribute. Um, so this is a good effort um, uh, to getting kernel compiled with Clang. Uh, there are several talks that has been done there in um, uh, various uh, conferences. So um, feel free to search for those, especially um, recently th there was a talk on LLVM meet. There was also a talk on, um, there was actually a, uh, a uh, mini conference at Plumbers where this was discussed in detail as well. So, um, now I'll move on to building the platform. And uh, there are actually 
few options that are out there in terms of infrastructures that you could use. Uh, Gen2 has a Clang overlay, uh, which is also, you know, in a way used by Chrome OS. Uh, Debian is actually building uh, Clang-based packages and archives. And Magea is another one, which is actually um, ahead of all where it is using Clang as its default system compiler already for um, uh, its targets. And um, you could also use Yocto project. And as I said, that's what I'm going to uh, use uh, throughout this presentation. And you could also use some of your own if you want, because uh, there are Clang based tool chains that are available. Uh, Clang is inherently a cross compiler. So there is no big deal uh, in creating a cross compiler using Clang. Um, and you could set up your own if you, if you want to build something um, your own or you might have your internal build systems. Um, in Yocto project, uh, there is a separate layer for Clang. It's called MetaClang and I maintain it. Um, what it does is it provides the overlay um, for adding all the Clang, Clang toolchain related um, packages through Yocto recipes. Um, in addition, it also provides additional tools that we discussed a little while earlier. Um, for example, the debugger, the LLD linker, and other runtime libraries. Um, there is also um, some packages that you will find in there uh, that are made available. Those are the tools that are written based uh, using Clang. And um, so you will find those recipes over there. But primary purpose of this layer is to provide a tool chain um, um, for Yocto project. So you can build Yocto project using it, which means it will be the internal tool chain. And you could also make it as part of your um, SDKs or extensible SDKs, you know, that you can build out of Yocto project. And we'll go over that um, later. Um, setup is very simple. Um, you just clone the um, Pocky reference distro, and then you clone um, Clang layer, and you add it to the to the layer mix into your project. So uh, it doesn't depend on any other layer besides the core layer. So you could just um, clone the you know the Pocky repo and and include it. And that's all you need in terms of setup. setup. Um, however, it's an inert layer, um, which means that when it gets added, it shouldn't be impacting if you're not using it. So um, as a result, you, uh, your default compiler is still GCC, um, even if it is added in the previous step. So in order for, it, for you to make it active, you would want to add something like toolchain equals Clang into your local configuration metadata. Once you set that up, what it instructs the system is that from here on, uh, use Clang as the default compiler. Uh, and as you can say, there are two options for this. You could also set toolchain equal to GCC. So in some cases, we'll go on later where some packages are not compilable with Clang. You would just use toolchain equals GCC and this setting will not be uh, effective for that particular package. And um, the another variable of interest uh, is runtime equals LLVM. When you select that, you are basically asking defaulting to compiler RT to provide you the C runtime and libc++ to provide um, the C++ runtime and LLVM unwind to provide you the unwinding uh, runtime. So. This tries to provide all the C, C++ runtime uh, from LLVM project. That's not the default though. Default is to use the GNU runtime. So runtime equals GNU is the default. Um, and uh, we'll uh, talk about you know, various combinations and the issues they might have, uh, why these options are chosen as uh, to remain as GNU to begin with. Uh, building an image is easy. Um, like if you work with Yocto project, you will just uh, build any image that you're building. And um, if you build a core image Sado, it is uh, going to build this image using Clang, which means um, all the packages that you build for target 
will be built using Clang. Uh, the native packages, there are certain packages that will build for your build host. They will not be built using Clang. They will still be built using a, a GCC on your, uh, on your host or your host GCC, so to speak. Um, and so uh, Clang will be effective to build only the target packages. So that's a, uh, a distinction that you should be aware of. Um, and then you can run the image. Um, by default, it will build for a QMU machine. You can just run it and run QMU and it should uh, boot. And uh, you could also build SDK. And these are standard steps to build an SDK. Once you build the SDK, uh, there's a variable called Clang SDK. If you set that in your local.conf, then it will also insert Clang into your SDKs as a alternative tool chain. So you'll basically have both GCC and Clang compilers available as part of the SDK. Um, there are a few exceptions actually, and this list has been reducing with every release of uh, Clang and, uh, and other software. So which means that patches are flowing upstream and uh, they are getting fixed to build with Clang, which is a good news. Um, in some cases, there are just <clears throat> tweaks uh, to flags because um, some package might be using a, a warning variable which is not available in Clang uh, or vice versa. So uh, we are basically tweaking those flags. It still is using Clang to compile that, but uh, you know, removing those options from the, from the build. Um, but some of them outright override the compiler and they would be setting the toolchain variable we discussed to GCC explicitly for that particular variable uh, or for that given recipe. So to look into a little bit more detail, what which one of those are, glibc. Um, if you are building a glibc based system, um, glibc can't be built yet with uh, Clang. There has been some efforts in the past um, but I think uh, we haven't gotten to a point where we can get a fully functional glibc working with um, compile and compile with Clang. Um, Muscle, however, uh, is another option in, in Yocto and that does compile with uh, Clang. So if you are choosing or you're already based on, on a Muscle system, you are in good luck here. Um, once you start using uh, uh, Clang, it should build muscle fine. Um, GCC runtime, um, as I mentioned, uh, that's the default we use today. So these are things like libgcc and libstandard C++ and you know other language runtimes uh, that GCC provides, and uh, they still need GCC to build. Um, and so you'll see like if you have compiler runtime recipes in there, they are still hard coded to use GCC. Um, we are still using U GCC to compile U-boot, although some configs do work. And um, there is actually a detailed list here, how to enable Clang to build U-boot. Um, we haven't enabled it in default by default in, in MetaClang. The reason is because um, U-Boot is used for many, many different machines and all of them may not be um, available. Maybe uh, one of these days um, I would enable it for a particular machine and see how it goes. Alfutils is another package that is used by a lot of tools um, to poke at the you know, objects and, and binaries. Um, and it doesn't work with, um, um, with Clang yet. Um, so, you know, there are few others, but very handful of those packages where you really, really would need, you know, uh, Clang is not building them at all. Uh, Grub, again, uh, same like U-Boot, we have same story here. It does work. I've um, actually compiled the latest master um, with uh, latest Clang 10. It compiled fine. I just had to disable um, W error uh, because Clang finds new warnings and treats them as errors. And uh, once you disable that, it will find. Uh, Python 3 is another key package that we are building with um, GCC. The reason there is that um, we cross compile Python and uh, we actually enable 
profile guided optimizations for building it because you know Python is very core to us. So we want most um, optimized Python on the system. And um, so for that, we run those uh, PGO workloads in QEMU. And uh, for um, when those workloads are built using Clang, uh, QEMU crashes. And uh, we haven't yet debugged why, but I think there is something there to fix. Once we fix that, uh, we should be able to build Python 3 um, with Clang. It builds fine if you don't, if you um, um, disable PGO. Uh, to build it. Um, then you would see in that particular file, uh, I mentioned nonclangable.conf. Uh, there are many packages that are just disabling the integrated assembler by passing the no integrated AS flag. Um, and that is uh, for obviously the reasons I mentioned earlier, where it is using inline assembly, which is not, um, uh, which is probably not understood by the internal assembler yet. Um, and in many cases, uh, your C code might have inline assembly, you know, that is not understood um, uh, by, by Clang itself. So, because, you know, the inline assembly, uh, it tries to match to whatever GCC does, but in many cases, um, the code that is written using inline assembly um, takes advantage of some a uh, lot of undocumented features then you know it might not be available in clang um, c runtime so the this is uh, actually you know your crt begin and crt end so if you dump when you link a particular executables these are your startup and end routines that gets linked in uh, uh, into the system, into the application. And um, these are currently used uh, from the libgcc package. Uh, there is CRT begin and CRT end uh, that are provided by uh, compiler RT. Um, and we currently do not use them. Uh, this is uh, uh, one of the to-dos we would like to use them um, in future. Um, so right now, if you see when we build compiler RT, then uh, CRT uh, feature is disabled by default. Um, but if we enable it, then you will start getting this uh, CRT begin and CRT end objects um, compiled and made part of compiler RT as well. Um, but it would also require a little bit of um, hand holding because um, in some cases, we might want to include both uh, CRTs, like you know, compiler RT and libgcc, um, into the system, in where built-ins are provided by compiler RT, but the unwinding is provided by libgcc, and so on and so forth. So I think there has to be some careful crafting that we have to do, uh, but this is certainly something uh, of interest in future. Um, as I mentioned. Uh, GNU runtime is the default. It works well. This is um, basically Clang relying upon libgcc and then libstreet++ to provide those runtimes. Um, mixing both may not work uh, really well. We haven't tried that. Um, while Clang works fine with libc++ and libstreet++, other way around is a less tested um, combination. So that's where mixing both may be a little troublesome. Um, the other option is to use LLVM runtime, which means your system has libc++ as default. Um, there is one issue we have in there where if a package doesn't um, build with it, then we have to include both of both the runtimes. And um, if there are two packages, say one A, built with libc++, another one built with libstreet++, and then there is third package, which depends on both of them, uh, then which headers to use, right? So there are little complex situations there. Um, we do provide it, although, you know, that some applications might, might link with it, but at system level, I still see that, you know, uh, that libstreet++ is still uh, used as default. Um, we have actually uh, tried using libc++ as well. We can get system working with that 
uh, to a certain extent, but then um, many of the packages, you know, you might find this build issues that you might have to address. Um, the uh, LLVM linker, it is built as part of the compiler tool chain when you uh, use Metaclang, uh, but it is inert by default. So you could enable it by f use ld flag, which is similar to what you have in GCC. So you can say f use ld equals LLD, and uh, you can enable it per package, means per recipe, or you can enable it globally. And uh, to make it easy to enable at a global level, you, if there is a distro feature, you could add LD is LLD, and that would basically switch your system linker to use LLD. Um, this works well uh, for x86, um, 64. Um, I haven't tried for other um, architectures yet. And similarly, um, there are the binaries versions that are available, um, the archiver and um, the symbol um, readers. And um, they are actually used when you set toolchain equals to Clang. So they're already uh, switched um, by the Clang system to use. Um, there is a LTO use case as well that is available. So there is a um, class available in recipes. You can inherit LTO. There are two options that it uh, exposes thin LTO and full LTO. Um, so thin LTO is a faster variant. So, you know, um, and full LTO will take a lot longer to compile, might need more resources, but then it might end up with a better code in the end, uh, more uh, size reductions and so on. Thin LTO is fast um, and it might give you uh, good results as well. So based upon what you need, you can choose whichever you want. Uh, one option that one issue that you will generally find is if you enable optimization for size, um, somehow Clang doesn't like that. And with, you know, enabling LTO along with optimization for size uh, doesn't yet work. Um, there are bugs already open in uh, LLVM Bugzilla to address that. So I talked about additional tools and you would see that um, we have these uh, static analyzers uh, that is uh, made available. And uh, in Metaclang, you have actually um, option to enable it. So you would similarly inherit scan build um, and you can set whether you want to scan every package or you want to scan a particular package. In this case, I've said scan build and curl equals one, which means uh, it will only enable uh, the static analyzer for uh, the curl package. Um, and if you want to disable it, you can disable it by you know, emptying out that variable for that particular package. So um, once it has run through, you can see uh, the, the results with a task or with the XC scan view and give it a recipe name. Uh, what it will give you is it will give you a link um, that you can set uh, and you can open that in a browser. And I've given you a snapshot here um, the, for a uh, open SSL scan that I ran and you can see that it reported some issues. So it's a good tool. Uh, it's kind of integrated into the uh, Metaclang as well. Um, if you're interested, uh, you could give it a shot. Um, extensible SDK, uh, as I said earlier, um, you know, you could install the extensible SDK. Um, you can build it as uh, we covered earlier. Um, once you install it and make sure that Clang SDK one word equals one is set. Uh, and then you install it. Once you install, you will have the Clang tools as part of the SDK as well. And as you can see, I've given you some snapshots here and, and commands how to install it as well as uh, how to set it up for using. Uh, there are uh, some variables um, in the environment that are made available like um, Clang CC, Clang uh, CXX, and Clang CPP, which basically are the C compiler, C++ compiler, and preprocessor. Um, which point to Clang. By default, your compiler will still be GCC in the SDK. So if you're building an application and you want to use Clang, um, you know you might want to set CC equals Clang CC and that will enable it. Uh, Clang tidy, 
uh, exe is also made available so if you are uh, running linters on your source code you can use that as well in sdk so at this point of time we make it um, as a, a secondary tool chain but you know uh, in future you might have you know use clang as a default tool chain as well uh, but right now we don't do that although there are um, tweaks in the system where you can make it if you want to do that All right, so uh, moving on, uh, Debian um, actually has a pretty decent size uh, archives that are now buildable with um, Clang. So as you can see, this is the graph I took from uh, the clang.debian.net and um, it tracks the progress from uh, LLVM 2.9 release onwards up until 10, Clang 10. Uh, recently, Clang 11 has been released, but um, you know there is no data for that yet. But as you can see, you know the um, there's a gradual reduction in number of failures from 15% to below you know 5% now, um, and there are around 31,000 packages um, that are tried, and you can see that uh, uh, just a little over 1,000 packages are failing. Um, to build. So there's a good progress in there. And um, so I'll go over some of the common errors that um, are encountered. Um, and that might account towards, you know, this thousand odd packages as well. So this I make failure is actually accounting for uh, probably, uh, I don't know how many, but uh, hundreds of these build failures, I think. So um, what it is, internally is that it's expecting a traditional uh, preprocessor and the preprocessor that you have with Clang is uh, not implementing the traditional you know CPP syntax so that is actually the crux of the problem even though there is a traditional CPP option but I think um, um, that doesn't implement whatever I make is expecting in there so I think there is a uh, defect already there and there are workarounds um, to, to address that. Um, so this is another common error that you would see is that C++11 requires a space between literal and identifier. So this is a warning that Clang will emit, but for whatever reason GCC didn't. And um, you could basically disable this um, on command or you can address in source code. In many cases I've seen patches where uh, people have addressed it, uh, and in some cases, uh, the warning is disabled. So um, this could be addressed as well. So this is also a large set of errors that you would see in Debian. Um, and uh, linking with LTO fails. So I think um, this is um, because of the way the um, gold plugin is being invoked by the compiler driver. And um, it doesn't find the um, compiler driver actually is not able to find the um, uh, gold plugin and the error actually on the top is is um, not indicative of what's going on but it's basically um, if you pass absolute path to the plugin then this starts to work and um, uh, in in yocto i think this is already uh, this issue doesn't happen um, so uh, I think this is an old problem. I'm not sure that we have this issue with newer GCCs, but uh, depends upon like if you have an old version of GCC. Clang always followed the C99 in line behavior and um, older versions of GCC might default to GNU89. So, which means that, you know, the, 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 um, the behavior is a little different where, um, and the external lines will, might work uh, differently in GNU 89 uh, model, and it might cause linking errors uh, in C99. So, but I've seen is that recently GCC 10 and Clang behave very similar uh, by default, right? So uh, I think these issues probably are addressed. Uh, one issue that um, we see in there is uh, with respect to percent %n uh, printf format. Um, and uh, Clang actually uh, errors out and it says that, you know, in star 
um, uh, is expected, which is right, and but it doesn't uh, find it, and uh, GCC doesn't um, warn about this. And uh, this issue is seen in some packages as well. Um, so um, in summary, as you can see, um, Clang can be used as a default system compiler. Um, we've been using it for, um, for, for ARM machines and x86, uh, 64 x86 machines, as well as uh, AR64. And um, I've done runs of uh, Yocto builds for PowerPC as well as uh, MIPS, and um, it goes through. So today we can, uh, if you include um, Meta Clang, for example, in, in Yocto, then you can do the world builds, uh, except, uh, you know, the issues I talked about, most of the packages, they do compile with uh, uh, this, with, with Clang these days, and um, with the newer releases, it's going, um, it's getting better. Um, so some of the things, um, some work to do, well, we still need to get glibc compiling with this and the um, GNU runtime, or maybe make LLVM runtime as default and uh, enable, you know, Clang-based builds for um, U-boot as well as um, um, Grub and other bootloaders. Once we have that uh, enabled, you know, we'll have like end-to-end, -end, uh, perhaps we will be able to build using Clang. So um, that's all I had today. So thanks everyone. And uh, now we can take some questions. Thank you.